Hi everybody, welcome back. Lovely to see you on this lovely summer's day. Thank you for joining me. Um, today we're looking at watercolour, um, but I wanted to explain a little bit about watercolour because it seems to be that medium that everybody um, seems to be struggling with and yet it's one of the most simple ones. If you don't think of it as watercolour media and think of it of your style and how you want to do things. So for instance, like if I show you like a, a book, that, uh, a page from a book that I've done, right? That is my style. That is how I like to paint. Oh, this is my new budgie. I'm being very naughty because I'm talking. And um, so here we have it, um, just a little tiny um, painting um, that I did there. Um, you have to look at it more as a style rather, you know, like finding your style and r rather than worrying about, oh, I, I need to, I need to, oh, no, I can't add this colour and I can't add that colour. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules, you know, it's it's just principles and just just things that can direct you a little bit, like knowing what colours make things look come forward and what colours um, make things look like they push back and how you can use watercolour to your advantage. So, sorry about that interruption. Um, the new budgie is getting a bit carried away. Anyway, uh, and as I was saying, so if you know what colours come forward and what colours go back, so your warm colours are going to come forward just the same as they are with acrylics and everything else. Your best friend, my best friend, remember this is my way that I do it, um, are baby wipes. Baby wipes, good for removing and for adding as well um, paint. Um, you can add paint when they dry and you can remove paint when they're wet. So they they are your best friend. So if you make a mistake, it, it, as I've shown you in the video, when you do a sky, you just put your, it, it on, just put some water on, not loads of water, just enough to wet your page. And then just let it all just do its own thing. Put your paint on and just let it do its own thing. And then just dab in, just dab in and you'll see the effects. Stay loose. Stay loose all the time. Some little tips that I can show you is like, for instance, uh, on this one, look, I've uh, just dragged the sky across if you want to make it look a bit more, um, you know, if you want to make it look a bit more abstract, um, which I usually do. But I'll, actually on the um, paintings I'm going to show you, I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I'm, the video is showing you how I created it. Remember what I'm saying to you though, any watercolourist who's had prop been to art school and studied watercolour or has watercolour lessons will look upon me and frown. I don't care because this is my style and this is how I, I paint and, I, and this is how I like it, this is what I want. So you can drag your sky across and then literally you can just do it with like a, an old credit card, mine's a hobby craft card and you can just literally pull it across at the end but pick a colour if you pick a colour from your sky just once you've got your sky how you want it you can just pull this across an extra piece on the corner and just pull it across and it will just come across your work and it will be it will be fine and it looks really effective you can't really make out what's going on I mean this is an old barn and um, and I literally drew this from the car if you remember but what I'm trying to say is, you know, don't, don't worry about things, about how how things turn out. If you worry about your work and, you, and you're just using a fine, fine, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine to do that, to put a little tiny, thin, weeny, tiny brush like this one. I only ever use this for just a little tiny bit of detail, just because it's in my palette, if I want to do something fine. But mostly, you know, I'll change up and I'll use some pens. And, you know, some nice uh, fine liner pens. But just remember that if you do buy um, fine liner pens and things like that, they need to be waterproof. So they need to be permanent. So that you can draw underneath or on top of your watercolour. It doesn't really matter which. So uh, that's what that's what I'm trying to, to get across to you. So 
this is the painting that I've done and I've done it like this on purpose this is like um like a house here with um it's a, a rickety fence and then these like big giant gates and fences and it's all what it was um I went across this field and there was just a whole um wall kind of thing it looked like just a whole wall of all these different kind of gates and fencing it was broken down and all sorts and, and I thought so I really like that but if you look look if you see the the bluey gray you know that's it's a cool color and it's knocked it back but the, because I've gone darker here those bits have come forward but even though that you know and the contrast I've managed to get that contrast in because of the greenery I've made it extra dark and I've put it around so it sends the eye around the painting and none of the two areas are the same so that area is different even though it's got the darker area it's different you know there's only a little bit of it here and a little bit of it there do you understand and then I've made an even darker area underneath where the shadows are from the gates and from the fences and things and the shadows from here from, from the little flowers and, and things like that but what what I'm trying to explain to you today is you watch how I create it in the video and just stay loose just enjoy just do a really rough drawing when I did this drawing I did it with a fine liner I didn't do it with um it wasn't a, a, a black it was a gray and then I took a brown and that is all that I had with me in the sketchbook and so um the, you know the the are these are brilliant uh, the permanent and what I did I tried to keep my pen on the page and so I stayed being really a bit, you know a bit like contour drawing where you don't you don't take your pen off the page and with uh, blind contour drawing you don't look do you and you just kind of just draw what you what you feel and it was a little bit like that some of the gates and fence I looked at and some of it I didn't and when I came home with the rough sketch and then I've just sat down and I've just done it really, really loose. Just the same as what I've done with the sketch of, you know, the drawing. It was very, very basic. You'll only see a quick fl flash of the drawing at the beginning, uh, but you will see how it sort of builds up. And add, you can add layers and depth. All I'm trying to say to you is please don't be frightened of thinking that you've got to use pale colours, subtle painting, or try uh, making it look so realistic that it, you're tearing your hair out because the, the colours have, have turned to mud and things like that. If you let each layer dry, you're going to really enjoy doing watercolour. I use watercolour and ink, actually. Um, but if you if you don't and you go ahead and you, you just keep putting layer on layer and it's wet, 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 it is going to just turn out to be a muddy, horrible colour. But if you if you don't do that and you make it more enjoyable by putting dry, letting the layer dry, it's ideal because like I'm in the sunshine at the moment. So I can do a couple of layers, go off, get a cup of tea or coffee for me and then when I come back it's all nice and uh, dry and I can continue me as an artist and because I'm a mixed media artist and because I don't follow the rules and because I want to create it how I want to create it I like the cauliflower lines that leaving one set of paint on top of the other to dry. I like those lines. I, I find them useful um, for, for moving on with your painting and for especially for Nero art. Um, but, you know, try not to think of that too much. And um, I'll show you at the end where I... I, um, I I, I'll show you the end painting, but I can't, but I can't um, show you how I dragged the sky across because I, I forgot to film that bit, and I'm, I do apologise. I thought I pressed the button and I hadn't, and it really annoys me when I do that. Um, so anyway, so what I'm trying to say is just enjoy it and relax. Let your layers dry in between, so you can layer up. Use those cauliflower edges for your, you know, for your own benefit and uh, that helps to keep it loose and then if you want you can go off and around with your permanent markers afterwards or you can do them before and paint over all right uh, but i'm just trying to 
help you to, to, to relax. If you if you go out, right, and you take loads of photographs and you come back and you've got a nice picture. I'm just looking about to see if I've got anything, but I haven't. But you come back with a nice picture and you think, oh, yes, I'm going to paint that. Yes, paint it, but try and paint it loosely first, a few times. Do the taping off exercise like I've shown you many of times in, in all different kinds of mediums. I've shown you in charcoal, I've shown you in um, watercolour, I've shown you in ink, I've shown you in acrylics, I've shown you in uh, little ink dyes and all sorts of things. Try it, tape them off, don't look when you're drawing it and do it loosely. And you will find that your mind is for photographing it more so than what what it is if you're just sitting there and going like this from a reference photo. That I can't think of anything more boring. And uh, for me, I'm not knocking it because other people can do that and they can come out with absolutely fantastic representation or um, drawings. But that's not what I want. So my picture that I did here, and I've dragged this guy down, I'll show you the next one when, when I've done it and dragged this guy down as well. It almost looks like it's the same place, but actually it isn't. So here you've got like a barn and, and the gates and things like that. I've taken the other picture that I did of, um, like I said, these rickety old fence and gates, and but it's on the next page. But it's a shame if this had been a concertina ball, it would have looked like I could have joined that on and it would have looked like it would have been a lovely long um, book and picture. And it would have been nice because it would have been carrying on. So that might be a thought for the future. I might do a, a concertina book like that where it can carry on. But I don't want to at the moment because I'm happy just filling in these little... Um, you know these little books as I'm going along in these uh this this particular uh moleskin book is uh of buildings I've shown it you before and where you know you can flip through and you you know you can do all sorts it's lovely I mean this was a garden shed this one was uh, this was part of a church and it was at Christmas time and it's got like a ghostly feel to it you know this was Christmas time and things so all and um, you know this was just like um a picture that i made up in my mind that would be in the woods where i'd like to live you know so they're all things that i you know this was the church this is the style where i discovered the style of what i'm doing now and i love it and i love it and i think it looks very effective especially in the sketchbook so that's what I'm trying to get to show you today. So enjoy the video. And if you've got any questions, please like and, and uh, comment. Um, I'm not, I, you know, I've got how many subscribers now is it? Um, 1,500 and something. And I get three or four comments out of all of you. Ask me any questions and I'll be, if I can help you, I will. And please like and subscribe. And if you find yourself keep coming back to the channel, then please subscribe. And uh, and then and press that bell. It's all free. I won't keep bothering you. I'm not a person who's going to keep, you know, I'm not going to be contacting you in any way. But if you press that bell, you will be notified, you know, by YouTube when I put a new video, which is nice for you. And then you can sit and watch it uh, whenever you want at your leisure. So I'm trying to cover quite a few subjects so that there's something for everybody. This might not be for you and you, and then again, you might just love it. But soon on my next video, we're going to be going down Red River again soon. Um, I was wanting to get down there today, but there's been a big football tournament down there and out. Oh, I can't get down there today. There'll be too much noise and everything. I need to get down there early in the morning like I like to, taking diesel and getting in there. Okay, so enjoy the video and uh, like I say, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. Hi, so here we are. Here, this is how rough the sketch was. It was really rough and I just drew them just like flat, you know, on the page. So I started off with some um, rust colour, which was a deep red. And then I added to it a, a bit, tiny bit of green and a tiny bit of black. And it gives it like that lovely rusty colour that I like. Went straight in with the sky after I just put on a little tiny layer, front layer. And then just dabbled about in the sky with some baby wipes. And just removed where I wanted it to be removed. 
going around here with that tiny brush that I said that I don't use very often and then gone back straight away as soon as I can to my big brush. The big brush, it's about an inch wide. It doesn't do it justice on here. Um, it's about an inch wide, but I do prefer to paint with a, a, a flat inch wide brush and um, to it just helps to keep loose. And as you can see on that middle gate there, how it, how the cauliflower is starting to come and it makes it really effective because on the next la layer it will it will give it more depth so i'm doing some greens now and bringing those towards the front and a rustic color here again but it's a little bit darker this time and then i'm going over once it's dried with the blue believe it or not you would think to yourself what on earth is she doing but i've gone over it with this blue and uh, gradually as you see as it dries and it fades and then pushing back again with the baby white and then leaving it to dry then i'm able to put on another layer this time going around the edges um with um, black to give it that effect of like different bits and bobs you know a little bit more detail a few splatters here and there and you know because gates and things they have marks on them and now you can see that they're starting to look a bit older and a bit more effective another layer i've put up in the sky there and took the paint off again and then adding black ink this time in fact it's very dark brown it's uh, indian ink so and i've just done put that on with a chopstick and then you can see now how i've brushed that about there's a bit closer up there now moving in with the trees, I've killed that to brush up a smaller flat brush up and then I've started out with lighter colour first. Then when it dried, I went a bit darker towards the centre and then even darker after that in, in odd little directions. And that's just about it. And then uh, I left the pencil lines underneath that I'd done in the sky because it makes it look a little bit more abstract -y. One thing to remember, always leave a white area around the area that you're painting and it gives it more depth. Um, so it looks like, the, you know, the, you're looking back into it. And so this is the book stood up now. And then on the next picture, look, you can see now put a little bit more blue in the top right hand corner. I dragged that sky onto that gate, giving it a lovely effect. I really like that effect. It's made the gate look even older and uh, the fence behind it looking older and it's made it stand out so um a few uh, little red flowers here and there of splatters and yeah really enjoyed it i hope that you've enjoyed the video and i hope that you've taken home something from it oh this was the one that was on the other page as well thought you might see how similar that they are remember your style is the best